Muy buenas tardes, doctor. Uh, es un placer tenerlo aquí con, con nosotros. Uh, la verdad, yo creo que va, que va a ser sumamente interesante poderle escuchar por lo que hemos platicado sobre el tema que nos va a, a presentar. Voy a leer la breve semblanza que nos, que nos compartió. Tenemos el placer de tener aquí con nosotros hoy el doctor Tiago Tavares Abranches de Soberal, que es arquitecto y urbanista por la Universidad de Santa Úrsula y doctor por la Architectural Association School of Architectural en Londres. Maestro en, uh, en ciudades proyectivas de la misma institución. Tiene una especialización de la Bauhaus, de Dessau, en Alemania. Es profesor de Historia y Estudios Teóricos y profesor suplente del Departamento de Diseño Arquitectónico de la FAU de la Universidad Federal de Río de Janeiro. Ha sido coordinador de Ciudades y Desarrollo Urbano en Blend Group y consultor del Banco Mundial para la Vivienda Social. Es actualmente coordinador de Arquitectura y Desarrollo en Sao Paulo, Brasil. Doctor, la verdad es un gusto para mí poderlo conocer y tenerlo aquí con nosotros hoy. Uh, sin más preámbulos, pues le, le cedo la palabra uh, y, para que usted imparta su, su charla en el idioma pues, que, que mejor, digamos, prefiera, con la cual se sienta más cómodo. Uh, for me, it's up to you. It can be in English, it can be in Portuguese. I don't know what will be easier for you guys. Uh, Chicos, ustedes inglés o portugués. Inglés. Inglés. Perfecto. Entonces nos vamos okay. con el inglés. Ok, great. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Really happy to be sharing this project with you guys. Um, maybe I can start sharing. Um, let me see here. Um, this is... Uh, I'm really happy to share this because this is a particular special project for me. Uh, let me just see if I can uh, advance thoughts here. Uh, just one second. I need to do this. Okay. Perfect. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. So, as I was saying, this is a is a, a very special project. I'm really happy to be part of it. To be part of since its beginning. I'm going to try to. It's a really uh, large project. I'm going to try to unpack just a little bit, but so we can have also space uh, at time in the end, so we can have conversations, right? Um, So this project, I'm going to just try to first summarize essentially what we're talking about. Uh, this project uh, is an attempt to have a new kind of, uh, to be a new actor of the housing production, social housing production. We have three projects in different stages. We're having Sao Paulo, Fortaleza, and in Cape Town uh, with their own particularities. But in essence, what they have in common is They, uh, we have 100% of the money is private, right? We don't use uh, uh, governmental money, not in the sense that uh, uh, it, it's just an, an idea of creating a new opportunity to produce housing. We understand that the, the, the role of the government in producing housing is fundamental, but we also understand that's a really heavy burden. And in our research, we understand that this could be a, a, uh, an opportunity. Right, so it's a civil uh, production and management, and there is a specific kind of uh, financial system, a blended finance strategy that uh, we can uh, we are using to 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 put this together. Uh, we bring in some specific innovations. Uh, we have a, a strong focus on um, working and living. So the whole idea of um, How can you work from home? And that's different from home office, pandemic, and et cetera. It is about uh, a specific bracket of uh, the population that produce something in their house as a complementing of the income, 
So they can be tailors, they can be, they can cook, they can be uh, uh, different kind of professions they are doing inside and the houses are not really prepared. We are still in a way living in the machine for living house. And we want to challenge this a little bit. Uh, also, it's the whole management and governance is also civil. Uh, and we start with a philanthropic uh, capital. And final, this is a project that already got some grants. We are the first in uh, BNDS, which is the, develop the Brazilian Development Bank. The bank. We got this. We were selected for the Urban Forum as a, a financial case. And we also were qualified for the city's investment facilities of uh, UN Habitat. And more recently, we also got a, a grant from the Citibank Foundation to expand some part of the research. I'm going to talk specifically about the Sao Paulo, and this is a work in progress project, right? The project La Pena Habitat, it's a join of two uh, institutions, the Fundação Chile Setúbal, which is the, the it's a foundation, that a philanthropic foundation that's in a specific territory in Sao Paulo, and they invited us. I'm part of the Blend Lab group, which is a, also a conglomerate of specific partners that are trying to push this project. This presentation that I'm going to show you here, uh, uh, it's they have four uh, parts, talking a little bit about the territory, talking about uh, a specific workshop that we did that uh, resulted in uh, this directrices de habitação, this guidelines book. With that, we did a competition, and also I want to talk a little bit about the evaluation project. And right now, in this moment, we are in the process of uh, land acquisition to, we already have some plots, but we need more plots to move forward and start building, which hopefully it's gonna start early next year. So we're talking about a periphery, a, a favela, a, a slum in the periphery of Sao Paulo. And before talking a little bit about that, there is one concept that I briefly want to explore here which I usually uh, like to, to talk in my classes, it's the concept of Brazilianization. Why is it important that we should talk about a Brazilian favela, right? Uh, beyond the fact that can be an interesting case study, etc. I think there is more, and this is my provocation. Different than the concept of Americanization, in which is the influence of the, the United States in their media, business, cultural practices, and this how this is exported to the other parts of the world. The, the coin, the term Brazilianization is used for by a few authors, quite the opposite, as if Brazil is a bad example. Uh, there's a lot of problems with the country. And of course, there is a lot of qualities, but it's a, a different than Americanization in which is in a, uh, an intentional attempt from U.S. to export their culture, their examples, uh, a Brazilization is like a, a bad copy of other countries of problems that we have here in Brazil, right? And this term comes from a book that Brazil Land of the Future by, by Stephen Zweig, Austrian author, one of the most important authors of his time. He moved, escaping from um, the Nazi regime, moved to US and then moved to Brazil and he fell in love with Brazil. He lived here. He loved the, the continental aspects and the culture and the et cetera. And he thought that Brazil would be the land of the future. But this is from 19, uh, 1941. And we can argue that this development didn't really happen. And more recently from the 90s onwards, a few authors starts to explore different aspects of the Brazilian uh, characteristic culture and etc. They are being copied, and we're talking about. Uh, so Douglas Copeland is going to talk a, a little bit about the, the the disparity between the rich and the poor, and this is one uh, Brazil is really uh, uh, expressive this this difference, and it's being replicated, and it's it's appearing more in different countries. The idea of the informality, the organization of jobs, the idea of uh, uh, everything like the, the, the Amazon and et cetera, everything was kind of like happening in Brazil. And there's one important author, 
Brazilian author uh, Eduardo Verde Castro, Castro that says that uh, Stephen Weil was also was actually right. It's not that Brazil is going to be the country of the future, but all the other countries will eventually be Brazil in a sense of uh, poor infrastructure, uh, structural problems, inequality, dismantling institutions, and more recently we have actually uh, threats to the democratic system, right? So, but beyond that, the part that I think it's really interesting, a part that I, I like to stress is that I also think that Brazil, in a one sense, it, it mimics or emulates a little bit of the rest of the country in a sense that it's really hard for you to understand sometimes the relationship between a really European country and a really poor African country. But in Brazil, we have all these things in the same petri dish, right? In the same example. And for example, if we look at the poverty gap in all these different countries, we have different variations. But when you cross Brazil and the world, it's quite similar. Similarly, if we look at the inequality database, Again, the spectrum is really, the range is really wide, but then when we overlap Brazil and the world, they're kind of like in the same record. So this is an argument that uh, it's really easy uh, sometimes to isolate the countries, but I think that Brazil, for the bad and the good, it kind of, can, we can see a little bit of everything that happens in, in the rest of the world. So look at Brazil following this, uh, this, um, authors, these intellectuals that talk about Brazilianization, I think when we look at Brazil, it kind of is a good uh, sample, a good understanding of what could actually be replicated in different uh, parts of the world because we, we share a lot of these issues. So, and bracket, uh, and coming back now to the territory, this is La Pena. La Pena is this small community in the, zone, the east zone of Sao Paulo, so the periphery of the periphery. And, and I also think it's a little bit of Peter dish because it's a completely isolated block uh, community. It has a train ray that uh, cuts the community from the upper part of the city, a little bit more formal part of the city. There is a highway that cuts in the left. There is a sewage treatment that cuts in the north. And there is a, a private chemistry company on the east. So, you only have two access. One is a, a pedestrian through the station, but the station closed during nighttime. And underneath the viaduct, which is a really bad uh, pass, it's the only car access, and it's a really bad for pedestrians. And we have one footbridge. So, and if you, I don't know if you can see my, my cursor, my, my, my mouse. Uh, you have a square here underneath, and this square is a quite important square. There is a church from the 1600s uh, and is a hub for uh, buses and etc. So if a, a, a young person, a woman, etc., stop their bus on the, the south part of the city during the night and they want to go to the community, they have to walk or to the footbridge and try their luck because it's a not really safe footbridge or they could go under the viaduct and walk kilometers when you're right next to the rest of the city, right? So this is the territory that we're working. And just to zoom out a little bit, it's right next to the edge of the city. The, there is a satellite city at night, right next to you, which with the international airport. This is the urban, uh, the metropolitan Sao Paulo. This is the red line, is the city of Sao Paulo. And the community is, uh, although not that far, but it's like a 90 minutes public transportation average to downtown Sao Paulo, but it's quite small. We're talking about like 4,000 houses almost. Um, and just a comparison, when we use in the same scale, we use, if we use the uh, Mexico City as a comparison, although the cities are a little bit different, metropolitan, metropolitan zones are pretty much the same. We are talking about uh, an area of eight uh, square kilometers. We're talking about a population of 22, 23 million metropolitan zones. Density is also quite similar. So I know that you guys are familiar with this scale of the, 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 the problem. And when we're talking about, uh, so 
La Pena in itself, this is a footbridge, you know, you can see it through here in the end, here in the corner, you can see the station, but this is the footbridge. Uh, this community, uh, the, 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 the foundation is working there for a really uh, long period of time, and then they help a lot. Um, but this community also has a, also a really interesting uh, characteristic that uh, it's developed through time. You can also see a range of um, urban problems. So the Alto La Pena, which is the red part, is a little bit more consolidated. So we can say that it's a, a normal neighborhood, middle class, lower class neighborhood. And you go to the blue, which is a little bit more simple and uh, deprived of some of the uh, character urban uh, features. And then you go down to the edge. We're talking about this main road here on Miro do Reis is only 300 meters. So if we go from the top one, this is the street. It's a quite nice quality urban space street. We go down, you start to have less trees, but it's still quite good. By the end of the street, you start to get jammed and, and lower quality of houses. And if you cross this alley, you reach uh, what we call Balafitas, right? So this is like a 300, 300 meters uh, walk. And not, not only that, uh, around this territory, you're going to see different qualities of housing. Some houses are sinking because it's in the bed of the river. And there's a lot of concrete to try to protect. There's a lot of floods, a lot of problems, but pretty much is a suburban, um, self-built, uh, urban, similar uh, like average favela in the sense. But it's it's going through a process of verticalization quite strong. This ver verticalization means a lot of things, uh, especially for this portion of society. Usually. Uh, they don't. They cannot invest money, so they don't have other ways. The investment, pretty much, is building up. If you have a house and you can build up, this is your retirement plan. This is what you can leave for your kids. You can put your kids to live uh, up floor. You can rent, and that's a, a, an extra income. So this is the, the architecture, in a sense. It's a uh, it's a fundamental. Uh, aspect of uh, uh, property, ownership, money, future, security, right? But this is built on a really fragile situation. And of course, the quality of this expansion it varies a lot. And the more you build, the more you start to uh, play against you because it starts to narrow the quality of these houses, right? So this is what we're talking about. In this context, um, the Fundação de Setúbal invited us to rethink. They understood that uh, although they have a lot of professional professionalization courses for the population, they have a, a, a warehouse that they 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 host events. They, there's a library, a co-working, and they they have an amazing. I I I I. I think it's really important. It's worth uh, investigating what they do. It's an amazing work. They are inside the territory for more than a decade. And although they are doing that, they are seeing the quality of the space deteriorating. So they invited us to talk about housing. And it's a massive challenge, right? And this was uh, almost three years ago. And they invited us to talk about housing and the way to approach this uh when facing with this challenge was okay so i could talk about housing in the general and the historical aspect but instead of that um uh, i decided that it would be interesting if we talk about the bottlenecks the challenges of the housing but i didn't knew because it was at the end of the pandemic i i haven't been there yet so it was more like a starting a conversation a more gen general conversation of the bottlenecks of the housing problems uh, in Brazil uh, and in Sao Paulo. And in the end, this end of this partnership, uh, we had a conjunto de diretrizes, guidelines for what we want for the community. And this was an amazing project because first it was built with uh, not a, a group of architects or urban, thinker, urban thinkers or etc. It was about people from the community 
people from the foundation, a lot of all local actors. So we got together once a week to talk about what we want, what they want, and I was bringing the challenges, right? And that was really interesting because instead of having like a, a fixed structure of what would uh, what I would talk during this the art of the workshops, it was much more like a, a reaction, action, reaction. Every week they would bring some of the challenges. I would bring also some of my concerns, and we build a, a conversation of almost like a a wish list. What we would like if we talk about housing this community, what we would like to do, right? And this was quite important because in a way it was not, uh, there is a lot of, uh, I don't know, uh, think globally and act locally. We are just acting locally. We are not worried about discussing the challenges of the, the periphery of the favelas or the housing in general. We were just talking about that framework. 4,000 houses, what can we do in this community? What are the, 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 the opportunities? But it was really, um, it was not pretentious at all. It was not like, let's do it. It was like, let's think about it. What could we do? And we start to create like all these different scenarios and different alternatives of what we would like. We create a series of workshops reacting of what they are bringing. But towards the end, we kind of understand like, okay, we do have something interesting here because when we arrange, not in the disciplinary brackets, but when we arrange in this table, this conversation with all these different local actors and specialists, we understand that maybe we could have a project that deal with three important aspects. First, renting mode. Second, civil administration. And third, uh, uh, hybrid financing. And what that means, especially the, 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 the renting mode, was a really important aspect because although now, and this project started three years ago, as I said, although, although now um, the Brazilian government started to have a social uh, housing project that includes the, the, the renting mode that, that, doesn't, that didn't exist at that time. But more than that, part of the research that we did to understand that uh, renting mode was fundamental because pretty much when the only alternative is buying the official housing, uh, we would push a lot of people to, to the uh, bad aspects of the informality. Not all informality is bad. I, I think there's a different com conversation about the informality, but we are pushing people away because it was not possible to uh, include, even if someone uh, get bad credit because they stop paying uh, a cellular a mobile phone account or they don't have their motorcycle anymore and they have bad credit, it was really hard. And even the fragility of their uh, income, they couldn't apply to buy a house. But even from the government, even with subsidies from the government, even if it was cheaper, they couldn't reach that. And they were paying rent. So a massive amount of the community, pretty much all these houses they bought from someone else that was there, but the majority of the offer right now in these communities, up to 80% is not for sale, it's for rent. So it's a business model, a local business model, and the persons, that, the, the population that we're renting, they're really in a fragile uh, situation because there's no contract involved and et cetera. But we understand the good part about the renting, right? The renting is... The, the freedom that you can have if you are just single or you're a couple, you can go to a smaller place. And if you have a family, you can move to a bigger place and then you can move back to a smaller place. And the whole idea of buying is like committing to a specific place. So we understand the idea of rental was really important. The civil uh, uh, administration is also really important. It's not like handing in. So what the renting, because of the renting, we're going to have some sort of partnership with these people because you're going to be renting for them, uh, renting to them. We need to co-run uh, the, the, the buildings. And that became an opportunity to not hand in and not be part of this process of building cities through architecture, right? And the, uh, high, the, the, the finance was also an opportunity in which we understand that we have the foundation and the foundation, if they could... Uh, invest some money in this project as we are about uh, uh, philanthropic money 
we could actually go to the market and get and 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 create that so we can get money from the normal market and put in this project. So, and then suddenly we look at each other and realize that although we start this really uh, with no uh, big uh, commitments or uh, quite not pretentious at all, but we realize, we realize that we have the actors that could push this project forward. And this project also come with these different discussions. This is also the, the, the idea of mobility. Or the, this is part of the research that we did from the local uh, population, the idea and necessity of not a house, the flexibility, how many people need what, what kind of space could work. This is, again, talking about the financing. How can we then, if we're getting money from the market, and they, uh, so if we are creating that, getting the money for the mar in the market, building the, the, the units, and then paying with the rent, the strategy that we want to pursue is the, is the rent to own. So instead of getting a debt to a finance to buy your house, you just rent. You can pause, you can move house, you can come back, you can do something else. And then by the end, if you pay enough to pay the debt of the bank, you get this house with much less bureaucracy, much more flexibility for the population. And this is the, the financial part. It's pretty much the, the non-profit non -profit resources is the base, the, 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 the foundation that can help us to step in. And then we can go eventually to the private capital and play as any other uh, development is fighting for investors um, in a city, right? We'll also be able to uh, benefit from a side research that the, the, the blend group did with the World Bank uh, understanding aspects of rental mold, housing in downtown Sao Paulo, so that also helped the project a lot. And by the end, we create this, uh, this document, right? It's available online. Uh, so this document is, is this, as I said, it's quite, uh, uh, I would say even sweet, it's like a wish list, right? right? What would we li li uh, like to have in the community? And there's also important aspects because we organize them in a different in, in three this clusters, right? So management model, housing units, and urban aspects. And that again is not a traditional way to split when we're talking the disciplinary aspect. But this is uh, it was built with the community, it was built with the members of the foundation. So in a sense, it's kind of organic, but it makes complete sense. Uh, when we talk, when you look at that community. So I'm going to just uh, go really briefly. Some of these aspects, they are quite mundane. It's not the, the, the novelty here is not necessarily what we are arguing. We're talking about like safety. So if we're talking about rent, rent is usually associated with fragility in the state versus if you own your property. So how can we do, how can we have a renting mode, but... Uh, uh, include the security aspect of it, so we can. You, you're not thinking that any next month maybe they can they can throw me out. Like so, we are creating the systems that this can be solved. Uh, also, uh, conflict resolution between neighbors. How can we have a social quality? What kind of design? How the design of the building should change to adapt to these specific characteristics of this population. Um, and how the architecture can be uh, a, a, a trigger, a leverage to create better quality of the neighborhood. And as we start to work uh, specifically, as I said in the beginning, the idea of uh, working, uh, living and working, like what are the qualities, what are the characteristics that we should have in these units? For example, uh, how can we rethink the flat, the unit in the sense that this room could, there is one room that could be adapted ideally for this work, but what would be the characteristics? It would be like an independent access. It would be uh, have a room with water and sewage entrances so you could easily transform this extra room in a bigger kitchen or in a hairdresser and so forth and so on. Uh, we're talking about also uh, specific spaces that could or see cultural aspects, memory, and rent, right? And profit for rent, right? And basic uh, 
protection, the quality of the houses there are really bad. So that's a different, also an important aspect. The if in one sense we do tend to have a more uh, nostalgic, almost uh, 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 old idea of the favelas that the person goes there and they're building their own houses, right? Most of the people that went there they didn't build their houses. They they hire local contractors who are going to build the houses, right? But the repertoire, what the quality of the house that they're building use bad and it's also bad because of what you see it's about precedence it's about knowing what to do so that's also an important aspect of the project how can we bring quality architecture in uh in um in a way that we can create better precedence better examples so the idea is when once we have the buildings done we're gonna offer the plans so you want to build a kitchen. You like our kitchen. This is the plan. You want to build a toilet. You like our toilet. This is the plan. This is the measures. This is how much it costs. This is like all with the materials that you can find in the shops. So how can we have really good architecture that is accessible, that you can actually go there? It's like, you know what? I want a flat like this. I have a piece of plot. I want to mirror this. I want to mimic this unit. I want to copy this kitchen because it really works for me. Uh, so it, this also is an, uh, an ambition of the project. How can we bring good examples to pollinate, to to cross hybrid and 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 inspire other houses, right? So and then so far like different aspects. And how can architecture be this also aspect of security? How can we design the buildings in a way that the streets are more secure? How can we look at the streets? How the the, the facade can be with shops, but not in a just economic dynamic, but all the other aspects that come, how can we push the idea that when you're an architect is building, a, is designing a building for that space, the architect is really concerned about not only what he's learning from the community, but how can this building can, can push the quality of that space further than the unit itself, right? So then once we did that, there is the question, what do we do with it, right? And um, I could say, like, you know what? I'm going to design it. But that would be also uh, potentially not only a risk, but really pretentious of me uh, trying to solve all these issues. I was much more interesting, interested in inviting people to push this vision even further, right? So we decide to have a kind of like a small competition, but I didn't want a traditional competition. So because the foundation was helping and was allowing us to, to dream big in the sense and to not be practical and trying to be super precise and use traditional models, they, help, they, they allow us to just invent other ways. So we decided to have a, 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 what we call chamada de projetos. It was not a competition because in the end, there was not a traditional jury. There was not a traditional winner. It was much more like, how can we push this almost like an idea competition, but a committed idea competition and bringing experts. So the first thing was we decided that in this competition, we, we, we would ask three projects for the participants. The first one was a project in the community itself, a, a housing a block in the community. We also want a different building on the other side of the tracks because we understood that there was a lot of uh, prejudice from the upper side of the city, which is here in the south and the, the right wing side. Uh, they, they call the community as the swamp, right? So we shouldn't go to the swamp. I don't want to go there and et cetera. So we're like, what if we also have part of the building on the other side of the tracks so they can see the quality of what we are bringing and create awareness and curiosity to cross the trails and also rethink the bridge because we thought that the bridge was also an opportunity to bring people from other parts of the city to the edge and not only offer better quality for the community itself but help to integrate to the rest of the city. So first part was choosing the, the practices so we, 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 from a number of uh, offices, we want to not, it was not a, a random 
invitation in the sense that we just want cool or whatever practices first. We didn't want any practice that have like a lot of history of social housing because we want something new. We want them to be open to our provocations. Uh, second, we want them to not overlap. We define the profile of these practices and then we understood that we want one that's more artistic, the other that has more, uh, it has more uh, experience engaging with the communities, with kind of per peripheral communities, suburbs and etc. Or suburbs. We want one that's more like uh, with the sh the standards and the quality of the units and a lot of experience and trying to push the limit of the size and and so forth and so on. So once we map this profile of these different uh, uh, practices, we choose, there's a board and we choose a field that we would imagine that they would push the, 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 the guidelines in different directions. And we were really happy that that really happened in the end, right? So these are the practices. We have people from Sao Paulo, from Minas Gerais, from different states of Brazil, from Rio, and also a partnership of uh, 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 practice from Chile and Lisbon. Uh, and also, we didn't want the jury, a traditional jury, that in the end, uh, I've been a jury, I've, I, I, organize, I, I, I was the organizer of competitions, and in the end, the board, the group who was creating this, we didn't want to give a carte blanche to the jury to say like, you know what, this is the one that I like the most, let's build it. There is too much information, too much collective knowledge that in a way we didn't want to pass this responsibility for the jury. At the same time, we really would like to have external feedback. We really would like to have people uh, sharing with us the, the, their, their thoughts on our project. So what we did was instead of having like a jury with like five or seven people, we created 25 members of a jury with people from our group, people from the community, and a lot of specialists, right? So these specialists from different areas. So we want architects, we want uh, builders, we want professors from the academy, we want specialists in, how, in social housing and etc. And it was amazing because also what we did was uh we create an event oh actually there is also an important aspect when the choosing the practices part of the 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 status of the the the, the principles of the foundation is that they uh, every process should go through an inclusion of uh, gender and race and we had an extra part because it was a paid invite into competition and would foment and 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 push for the idea of having uh, all the maximum diversity that we could have in these teams, right? Um, but then coming back with the group, we decided that we didn't want this group to just be in a room deciding and talking about this project. We went to the community. We went to the, the warehouse from the foundation and we did a day event with the architects, with the community and was really, really uh, amazing. But then how can we evaluate this? If we didn't want a final winner, what we want from all these amazing specialists was their precise opinion from specific aspects. So we create a, a, a questionnaires that they would fulfill that pretty much was, there was a somewhat complexity because we're talking about opinions in, the, in three different projects from five different practices. So we're talking about like 15 options, so quite complex. So what we did was they would receive uh, some reports that they could feel. So in a, one practice would uh, have uh, three proposals, né? Jardim La Pena, Atravessamento e São Miguel, and they would give stars about our performance. They would make uh, their critique, have comments of their concerns, and kind of give an order of priority they would do it. And this is how it looked like one of these uh, boards. So this is from Apparatus. They would have their three projects and with the three feedbacks from each of these juries, 25 persons. So we put all this together and this was the day of the event in the warehouse. Full of people was packed. Uh, 
presenting of the community, conversation between the architects, the, the, the five uh, a group of architects interacting to each other, learning from each other, uh, the community learning, giving feedback real time was uh, an amazing, amazing day. Um, and then talking briefly about the, the, the proposals, they, uh, this is a, a, a summary of the proposals. Each of them will have like just one board. They have like a longer presentation with models and et cetera. But we have a, 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 a summary in which each project, each practice would uh, give uh, one board for one of the three uh, buildings that they should propose. So this is Arancibi Apparatus. So you have like one building, the bridge, and the other building. Uh, Coletivo La Pen, uh, Coletivo Levante would have like a, this is uh, the uh, uh, work a lot with communities in Minas Gerais, Gustavo Travo, Gavia Mais Portas, e Territoma. And then I think just to to start to uh, finalize this really brief and maybe a little bit too intense talk. Uh, it's interesting to talk about like how can we see on these proposals the connections to the guidelines that we gave. So when we talk about, for example, the proposals from Jardim, Jardim La Pena, if we look at the Tehituma one, um, they have specific parts how to relate with the community. So if we look at the Fachada Chiva that like this, the, the storefront was quite hybrid, quite porous one to create a specific kind of urban facing the street at the same time, how they develop the working and living mode, they create specific units that when you look at the plan, they will have two staircases. One staircase that will be like a private domestic one for the, the, the dwellers that they could move through. And another staircase that would uh, be like a commercial staircase almost, in a sense that, for example, if you zoom in in this project, this unit would have one door that go to the domestic part and another door that goes to one specific room that could be converted in a practice, in an office, and et cetera. So this is one, how they react. Uh, uh, Colectivo Levante, in, they react to the whole aspect of uh, uh, neighbor conflict and transition from different houses to apartments and the transition mode that can be quite... Um, stressful they create balconies but massive balconies like almost terraces that they could each house could have their own space and almost share visually and soundly the community but without uh, uh interfere with each other uh, with one another uh, on the other hand uh diego portas in materia e, e gavi architects they they create a set of a specific, almost like a system to build, but this system would push a lot of interesting conflict. So they would interchange the, the building houses with courtyards. And in the sense, these courtyards, if we zoom in, they would not only be connected to the shop, so you could have your own shop facing the door with your house, that could be an extra room if that's the case, but the houses would share a courtyard. So much more than just a, should we have a, a wall or how that could work or a division, etc. How this kind of transition would uh, um, overlap, uh, uh, sorry, how this kind of overlap would be actually more safe. The kids could be, everyone could check their, each other's kids and etc. Or Gustavo uh, Utrabo, his proposal, uh, he gave emphasis uh, in a different aspect that uh, from the Cadea Diretrizes. So, for example, one of the aspects that the, the units, in a way, it's re if you imagine a couple that got married and they're moving away from their parents and they want to move to a flat, if you don't have any furniture and you go to the cheapest uh, big brand to buy, bed, wardrobe, table, chair, and etc., you almost can spend more than uh, seven to ten minimum ages just to have furniture in your house. And we want, in a way, that how can architecture embrace and anticipate some of this uh, uh, furniture necessities? Not only that, but how can we or help to organize the space and ideally use this as 
uh, thermical barriers for the sun. So uh, Gustavo Travo did that. He created this niche in the house that you could have a balcony, a laundry room, uh, a small office there, a kitchen, and etc. So this was uh, his way to to react to one of our provocations. And Apparatus here on Sibia also did like a brilliant job that here they reacting to the sense that one of the things that we also asked for the, the offices was how can we have not only shops, but an extra room that we understood in our research that is fundamental to have a, 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 almost like a community room for them to meet, for them to have the, the, the week meetings, but at the same time, how can they have, um, uh, you can have parties, of course, you can have birthday partners, but the community was asking for space, for example, um, I forgot the word in, in English, sorry, velorio, um, when the person dies and you want to pay your respects, they didn't have a place for that. Or how can you have different kinds of activities that could also help in this? So this place is not empty most of the time and not being useful. So you could rent for a capoeira house, for a, for a capoeira class, for a ballet class, whatever. But at the same time, it's not 100% a, a, of the time occupied. So you could have like the, the, the meetings, the communities need meetings, etc. The way that they did that, so they have this entrance and they create one barrier a courtyard and the room in the back. So that allow kids to play. There is some kind of uh, control, but at the same time, you can allow uh, for uh, like strangers to come in and you have a different division, a different entrance for to, to get access to the building, right? So this is the view of this courtyard with the different access. Uh, also, uh, they, the, the, how they react with the idea of flexibility of the rooms. So they did, for example, uh, when you get this room, uh, you could have like two entrances, but you can have like a, a, a door that could close between. So not only this could be two different flats or could be a space to work, but you also could convert in a different uh, for, for example, if it's a parent, like a single mom with kids and they want to have like a, a room for the parents to live and etc. So you could, st you could start to have this connection and could become a room. Uh, also, they are creating the same kind of wardrobe slash architectural frames, so you could not only organize the space, but not but uh, uh, beyond have mechanical protections for sun and ventilation, etc. They did this; it was a masterclass. They did this in several times. How can you have like different units that, if you, you push one of the rooms to the other side, you transform? one unit in three bedroom and the other unit. So instead of, in, they, they push the idea of renting modes, changing units, maybe you don't need to change the unit. You can just push one room to the other uh, apartment, open one door and closing the other door. And uh, how this dynamic could transform two apartments and one apartment and etc. Then uh, in Edificio São Miguel, also there are some important characteristics, the way that they react for what we push. Tehetuma, again, pushing with the idea, a strong proposal for the Morar Trabalhar, the living and working. So they create uh, massive circulations in which, again, if we zoom in, you would have two doors in the corridor. In a sense, it's in this case, in the same corridor, but super open and you would be able to get access to a specific room. Not only that, they also bring one thing that came from the book that how can we, it, this, is, this is common in, in different cultures, but it's not really common in Brazilian culture. Uh, if we have, because as a rule, if it's a social housing unit, you can only have one bathroom. So how can we split this bathroom so different members of the, 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 the house can use the same unit and instead of just one person inside of that unit with three different functions, right? Uh, Diego Portas, e Gavia, e Materia, they were pushing the idea of how this unit, the, the extra unit of the housing, the, the, the working could be outside and inside, which was also quite powerful. 
and the view and what they're proposing. And again, Apparatus brought like a really provoking idea that what if the circulation, they, they're reinventing the idea of a villa, because when you talk about a villa, a classic villa, you have all the houses with their doors to the main access. And that creates a, a, a idea of ownership that uh, if you, there is an argument to be made that when you have your units three or four floors up and your entrance of your unit is upstairs, you stop relating so much with the ground floor, with the common area. So if you bring your door to the ground floor, how much that can change the, the understanding of the common space. So they create a specific circulation, but several doors. So if we zoom in a little bit on this block, they create in this unit shops on the ground floor, and then you have a, a staircase that can reach to the second floor in which you have like a studio or one bedroom house that could have access to the shop. And then you create a staircase on the side that if you push up, you reach your house on the second and on the second and third floor, right? So in a sense, the blue part, the blue, the blue flat, the door, it's on the ground floor, right? And you see like this staircase belongs to you. So when you look like this, you have several uh, how units here and you do have 10 doors to 10 dwellings, right? And that happens along this axis. So this is the unit, a double floor in a circulation. And again, this is easier to see. Highlight the shop, the one bedroom flat, and then you can go up to the two bedroom uh, units. And other thing that they brought here in this conversation was how can we push the idea of the furniture, the uh, a cheap inclusive furniture that could help to organize the units. The houses of the windows like this are also uh, something that we proposed, we push in the directory, the Caderno directory, is that how can we have windows that the, if the glass it's smaller, it's easy to change, and maintenance is cheaper. But not only that, we avoid fences in the windows that are quite common when you talk about uh, in Brazil in general in the urban areas. So this is their view for the units, and then just to finalize how to cross, I'm just going to bring two proposals. Curativo Levante brought an idea of creating this, the transforming the, the, the footbridge not in, a, in a, a, a connection, a bridge, but a destination itself. So this place to, to call attention, to create awareness. So it's a square, a square that you're going to have parties, theater, cinema, exhibition space for kids, and etc. And that was a quite powerful idea. Uh, how can we use this a footbridge as a almost like a signing post, a lantern to to say to the rest of the city we are here. Um, on the other hand, Apparatus de Arancibia, what they push was they create different footbridges, but they understood that there is a leftover space from the railroad company that is potentially potentially a linear park, and that could also not only be for the rest of the community, but for the other part of the city, inviting people to be part of this park. That's it, 50 minutes on the clock. Uh, pretty much that's what I have for you guys here. We can talk more if you have questions about the financial or the structure, but this is a work in progress. And I said the, the next step is uh, we are in the in the moment of buying uh, plots to build some of these buildings. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, profesor, por por la por la clase tan interesante y, y donde has explicado pues todo el, el 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 proyecto, ¿no? Yo tengo una una pregunta. Uh, en la primera parte, digamos, del proyecto se plantea como este, este libro, digamos, esta recolección ¿no? de directrices para, digamos, intervenir ¿no? en, este, en esta colonia uh, uh, tan, uh, tan, tan particular. Uh, 
Me gustaría, digamos, poder profundizar, digamos, de una cierta forma como esta parte, porque entiendo que uh, esta primera parte del proyecto ha sido una parte como muy estratégica, por así decirlo, porque usted bien lo recalcó, fue trabajar en lo local y no en lo global, ¿no? O, o para poder elaborar unas ciertas estrategias. Pero uh, me gustaría, digamos, preguntarle uh, de todas esas estrategias que, que, que se pudieron elaborar a partir del análisis y del estudio del barrio, estrategias, repito, que salen de un estudio local, ¿cuántas, digamos, se pudieran generalizar, por así decirlo, o cuántas, sí, de, de estas, ¿cuáles, digamos, se pudieran, se pudieran generalizar? para usarlas como base para un posible modelo de acción, a lo mejor en otros contextos, en otros contextos similares. Y la otra pregunta es, ¿qué sigue? ¿Qué sigue después de esto, que se hicieron los proyectos, que se pudieron valorar, ¿no? Proyectos de, también muy interesantes, ¿no? Uh, ¿Qué sigue ahora? ¿Cuál es el futuro? Disculpa, Ur, la segunda pregunta... Sí, de ese cuestión es, de, después, después de todo el recorrido que se hizo, ¿no? de, valo, de valorar ¿no? los proyectos que se entregaron para las diferentes zonas, ¿cuál es el futuro que sigue en el desarrollo, digamos, de la zona? Perfecto. Um, bueno, uh, de una cierta uh, so in a way, el caderno de directrices, um, it has a. Uh, almost like a naive beauty in it. It's quite simple. It's not ultra complex. It's a, this uh, wish list, this Christmas wish list, what we would like, right? But in this process, as I said in the beginning, we now have three projects. So once we did that, we realized that although super local, 80% can be Uh, uh, re reconnected. So we start to have one in, in Fortaleza. The Fortaleza also we start with a, 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 a philanthropic uh, start, uh, a, what we call a catalyst fund to help um, uh, start the process. Universidades is the group there in Fortaleza is pushing this. But there Uh, in Fortaleza, we are also the, the government uh, uh, thought it was really interesting the project, so we are starting to create a, probably a partnership with the government that would offer a piece of land so we could push the project and help with some of the capex with the costs later on. But we are always doing this financial system that a, a high a blended finance system that's being proposed actually by the World Bank, and we are trying to do our version of it. Uh, so the financial mode is it's really important. Architectural aspects, uh, what I think architectural aspects, what the, the 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 main characteristic is actually to locally, right? So for example, uh, in Fortaleza, there is not the same uh, demand for this what we call uzumishto, uh, this room, as I said, that's for the, the community and etc. But we understood that having this room is really important, especially if we have uh, uh, a range of in different incomes in the same building, right? We are working, most of the, 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 our income, we're talking in Brazil about uh, the lower part of the income, but not the lower, lower part of the income. Right now, the, the social housing project in Brazil is divided in two, pretty much one to three minimum wages and three to six minimum wages, right? So we are focusing on the second one, but we do have projects to give money, specific money, so we can include uh, one to two minimum wages. And that creates specific concerns of conflicts, of neighbor conflicts, how we can put someone who uh, have a steady job with someone who is living from Uh, tickets, right? So th th there is a lot of uh, uh, concerns that we realize that this can be replicated. The same thing in South Africa, Cape Town, the whole idea. So I would say that 80% of the, 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 the topics are quite the same. The, the novelty is not so much in the ideas in itself, but how we connect them together, right? 
and how we adapt them with the financial system and how we adapt with the uh, long run, why you are paying these units, how, who's going to be running. So we're going to create a board with representatives of the, the, the residents, the dwellers, a board with neighbors, a board with people from the, ac the academy, a board from people from the government, a board from like people from different boards are going to get together and discuss how we're going to increase rent or not, how, how we're going to solve uh, uh, a neighborhood problem. So this is part, I think it's a core aspect of it. And the second question, we are uh, quite excited because we're in the final stages. We already have, as I said, one plot. We will start with two plots. We're, so we're talking about the, the first first trial. It's going to be with two buildings uh, with uh, roughly 25, 30 units each. So we are talking about like 60 units. So there are small buildings uh, because of cost of elevators, lifts. They're quite complicated. So we're choosing to have provision for lifts, but that increase a lot in the maintenance and the cost of the maintenance of these people. So... Uh, we avoid lifts right now, so we are going to the limit of five floors. And we this is the stage. We're in the stage of finalizing the, the last acquisition of the last uh, lot. And also, there is a challenge that, and that I didn't really foresee, that when we go to the community, the lots are really small. And I need a sort of a necessity to get like three or four lots to have a building. Otherwise, just the setbacks. I'm having Sao Paulo a minimum of three meter setbacks. And the lots are seven meters. So I, I could only build like a one meter building, right? So in the sense, I need to have like three or four lots. And that means that I'm not the government. I cannot go there and say like, you know what? You guys, let's move you guys here. Then I'm going to build a building. I need them to sell to me. And I need the neighbor and the neighbor and the neighbor and the neighbor. And that was a massive challenge to find this alignment of stars that are like, okay, they all want to sell and I can buy and I can then exchange flats and et cetera. So that was a, a much harder challenge that I anticipate, I have to say. that That's taking me months to solve this. No, es, es interesante porque todo empieza con esas cuestiones de esas directrices locales, ¿no? Esta lista de Navidad básicas pero realmente detrás de todo este proceso hay un funcionamiento muy complejo, ¿no? Que, que, que tiene que, es una máquina muy compleja para que pueda funcionar. Uh, dejo aquí la palabra si alguien quiere preguntar algo. Aquí las personas que están en línea. Pueden preguntar incluso en español, ¿eh? porque los, los brasileños tienen esto de bueno que entienden el español como si fuera portugués. Es por esto que le estoy hablando en español. Despacito, hablando despacito, pero consigo que I can understand. Alguien? Yeah, but, uh, Eduardo, ¿tú quieres preguntar? Sí o no? Sí. Venga. Aquí está Eduardo. <risa> Hola, Diego. Este, muchas gracias por toda por toda la información. Eh, okay. Eh, me parece muy 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 interesante todo esto. Eh, quería preguntarte. Si el libro de directrices de habitación, de habitación eh, está en inglés, si, si se puede conseguir en inglés o en español, porque me parece muy interesante cómo, cómo desde este punto como antropológico llevan a, a, a lo arquitectónico que resulta en, me gustó mucho como lo dijiste, como a trigger to, to, to improve the, the, este, esta parte como de, de que la arquitectura es el detonante para mejorar. Entonces, me preguntas tengo muchísimas, pero... Me gustaría preguntarte primero si el libro está en, en otro idioma que no sea portugués y, eh, y si el financiamiento, porque mencionas en un inicio que el financiamiento viene de, de capital privado, de asociaciones de, 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 sin fines de lucro y, y este capital privado para generar proyectos de, este, de esta escala es alguna fibra inmobiliaria o algún, alguna cuestión así muy muy grande o es capital eh, independiente pero privado gracias 
Ah, eu, eu vou fazer uma versão em espanhol. Vou fazer uma versão em inglês e em espanhol. I, I will make a, a Spanish and a, 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 a English version. I still don't have it. Because, it, as I said, we did that in a really pretentious way. It was not something that we thought, oh, it's gonna, people are going to be interested. Because it's quite simple. It's quite mundane. But it was. I think the value is... Uh, understand that it was really made with a lot of hands, a lot of concerns, and the, and although I was helping to guide the conversation, of course, I was really let the the order of the 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 concerns to be quite natural and the organization to be quite natural. So I think there is an anthropological value, definitely, in how that was not. Uh, okay, disciplinary dictates, right? Oh, this is how we understand the, the hierarchy of this. Sometimes you look some of this uh, diretrizes and you're like, yeah, that's, that's quite for us, that's quite obvious. But people are like, yeah, but we need that, right? We don't have this here. And and some of them are quite sophisticated because it was a project that I mentioned and as an example, they're like, we want that. And like, okay, but that's quite like the, as for example, like the wardrobes that help in the shading to, and the organize, that was like super, super design specific orientated with the window in the side. I show a project that I really like and they all love that. I was like, okay, so that's going to become one of the guidelines. We want this kind of furniture. Of course, then the conversation evolve a little bit of the, the, the money aspects of it, but initially was this super um, natural uh, choosing what they like and what they didn't like uh, uh, without much hierarchy, right? And regarding the financial system, that's part of what, uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to make it. As I said, we have three. We are in the verge of starting the Sao Paulo one, the building aspect. Um, and it's been immensely challenged because even the rules for getting the money are changing, right? So we are using, in Brazil, we call it CRI, Certificado de Recebíveis Imobiliários. So each country have their own version of it. Pretty much that's how everyone builds. No, no developer, no contractor nowadays have the money by themselves and they go and say like oh, i want to build a building here whatever city and they're going to build 10 floors and then wait to get the money you you it meets that right you have the initial money you get the plot you get the project and once you have the license you go to the market and say like i'm gonna sell x amount of that here and i'm gonna uh, offer you that I'm gonna prom uh, uh, I'm gonna promise you that in X years I'm gonna pay with interests, right? That's how the market works, and we're kind kind of doing that, but we have a social project, right? There is no uh, benefit. All the money that we get, we have to pay everyone that's involved, but there's no developer with profit in the end. If we have money in the end, we convert to 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 finish the debt as soon as, as possible and we convert that money in cheaper units or cheaper rent. We have all these different uh, mechanisms to help. So the rent mode, even what they are paying for rent, of course, is going to be equivalent to what the market used to pay in the neighbors because we want to pay the debt as quick as possible. But at the same time, there is no reason to remove anyone because the whole idea we have a lot of insurance the one of the grants that we got was exactly for insurance so we, if we have issues with people paying we have this insurance that's going to guarantee that the investors are going to get their money back and there's a quite sophisticated idea of blended finance but we go we're going to be fighting ahead and, and, and so the position is quite important that we are trying to be in this new actor because in one way we're going to be fighting with other developers, building normal buildings for upper, upper middle class and middle class. So we're going to be like, hey, but we're social class, but we're paying the same. Maybe a little bit longer, but maybe if you have a lot of money, you can help us. But we're going to the market like this. 
And at the same time, here in Sao Paulo and in Brazil, now we are seeing more and more the, the, the paragovernmental militias and drug lords actually investing in housing, right? They are building houses in forbidden areas, in areas that they don't have the right to build and renting these areas. So we are also going to be like, you know what? Give me space because I'm going to be there with you, offer you a much better quality unit, and I'm going to create a better example so people can have an, op an opportunity to come to live in this kind of building and not in your building. So in a way, we're trying to find a space between the traditional market and the, the developers or the informal developers, irregular developers that are building the communities. So and letting the government with a much more robust program of housing to focus specifically on the, the part of the population that most need the houses, right? If you get the most fragile portion of the population and they start offering, we can go one just one step uh, um, up and say like, if you get, I don't know, uh, a waiter and a hairdresser, um, Uber driver and a cashier or couples or families that have this income, but it's not super fixed, it's not super secure, and they sometimes they have to rent different units from informal uh, builders with no contracts, super fragile. Here in Brazil, we actually have a quite robust lei do inquilinato. I don't know the translation, but like the rules, the 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 the, the the laws that protect the who is renting the units, it's quite uh, robust, it's quite strong, and they are not part of it. So the owner can turn to this person and say to this couple or whoever is renting or a single mom with kids that have two jobs and say like, you know what, next month onwards, I want 50% more or next week, I need you to vacate the premise because they're not part of the system. Right. So in a way, we are creating systems, we're creating a, a, a program that then can offer and include more, more people in the formal, but more flexible uh, uh, kind of in, uh, development. Right. Because the whole idea of uh, uh, coming back to the beginning of the, the, the talk. The whole idea of formality, this discussion of formal informal is really important. But most of the time we're dividing. It's like, this is formal, this is informal. The way that we want to push this is that how can we understand the value of the informality, but we also understand the value of formality and the, the, the richness, how, how the formality right now, it's not really inclusive. So how can we make the formality more flexible so we can expand this formality, different kinds of formality, so more people can be inserted and benefit from the good aspects of the formality. So in the sense, the program tried to, uh, it's a quite humble, we're starting with just like 50 or 60 units, but ideally, if it works, it's something that we can share the mechanism we can share, we're gonna be able to offer to other people, other cities, other communities, like, do you want to do something similar? What you need is a, a starter, right? This catalytic, catalytic project. And why not build with just this money, right? That will be a question. If you have a philanthropic uh, foundation that for, for us is giving, I don't know, let's one million whatever, Dollars. Imagine if it's giving one million dollars, which is not right, but just for the sake of the argument, I could build X amount of units with that money. But if I use this as the leverage for a bigger project that I can have a 10 million project, I include much more people. And in the end, they give the same one million, but I expand the number of the units, right? So it's not like a just small pocket project but the idea of replication and inviting new actors new philanthropic actors new architects movement of architects that wants to to do something 
but they are not holding hands. So we're kind of like holding hands and, and trying to create this example. If you select the right kind of actors, you can push this kind of project forward. But then again, with their own particularities, instead of trying to create a model that is going to be like a stamp that you just need to do this, we're like, we're just trying to show our system, right? How we are doing and how much you can learn with us, we can give you the information and you can replicate with the, your internal actors, with the money that you can get, with the philanthropic actors that you have, with the rules, the governmental rules that you have, and the community, the social movements, that's fundamental. Without the social movements, without the local community believing in the project, you're just a foreigner coming and trying to impose a specific way to live. They need to be part of it. They need to uh, is not just be invited to live there. They need to be part of the actors of transformation to re help you rethink what they need. So, and that's m our role. My role as an architect is how can I push architecture to the limits, right? It's from the, the extra room, the extra door, how the window helps the streets, how the units can be rethink, can, how can we move away from the traditional two bedroom flat that's been everywhere. So if you're a single or a couple, it's too big. If you're a couple with three kids and your parents are coming to live with you, it's too small. And then everyone lives away and it's too big again. How can we rethink these units? How can we think the building itself to help the street, to help the communities, to inspire all the houses? How can this be a good example, a cheap, efficient, beautiful, good example that people want to copy that to make their life better? So, I, I well, as you can see, I'm really passionate about it. I really love the project, but... Uh, because I think there is a lot of potential, and we're re really close to we're really close to start building, and I think it could be amazing. Uh, it's an amazing adventure so far. Doctor Tiago, toda la pasión se ve, ah, y de hecho, oh, yo ya ah, para cerrar, digamos, esta aportación, me gustaría rescatar una frase que acaba de acaba de ah, acaba de decir que we need to be part of it, ¿no? necesitamos ser parte del cambio, ¿no? ser una parte activa, sobre todo pues en esos países donde hay estas grandes dinámicas, digamos, de desequilibrios urbanos y sociales. ¿no? Entonces, bienvenidos a estos a esos proyectos y bienvenida a tanta pasión ¿no? para poder arreglar ¿no? estos tejidos que de la informalidad pasan a ser formales en el momento que se reconocen. Por lo tanto, muchísimas gracias, doctor, por, por habernos explicado esta investigación. Y nada, esperemos que esos proyectos sigan desarrollándose y con mucho éxito. Gracias por su tiempo. Muchas gracias. Y espero que una vez que I manage to translate the, the caderno de crisis, I let you know so you can share with the class. Probably in the next month, I'm going to try to translate it. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice week.